Okay, so first of all, I am going to search for a particular type of formatting. So go to editing and find and advanced find. Then I'm not going to put anything in the find what box and go to more and format and highlight. Then when I go find next, it will search for all of the text that is highlighted in the document. And it doesn't matter what the text is or how long it is. So in this way, you can search for whatever type of formatting you want. Then the next thing I'm going to do is change the formatting. So go to editing and replace. And then I no longer want to search for the highlighting. So go to no formatting. Then I want to find CO2. And I'm going to replace that with nothing in the box. Then go to format and font and change the font style to bold and OK. Then when I go replace, it will find all of the CO2s and change them to bold. So in this way, you can change the format of the text to be whatever you want it to be. Then the next thing I'm going to do is change just part of the formatting. So I want all of my CO2s to have a subscript to. And in order to do this, I'm going to manually change the first one, then select the text and control C to copy. Then that will be on my clipboard. So I can now go and open up the replace box again. And another way of doing this is to use control H. And now I will replace the CO2 and I won't change it to bold. So select no formatting. I'm going to replace it with the caret symbol and the letter C. And that means I will replace it with whatever is on my clipboard. And as on my clipboard, I have the CO2 with the subscript 2. When I go and click replace now, it changes the CO2s so they all have a subscript 2. And so in this way, you can change the text to be whatever is on your clipboard. So whatever you most recently copied. Then the next thing I'm going to do is change paragraph breaks into spaces. So if I switch on the show hidden formatting symbols, you'll see that each of these lines is separated by a paragraph break. And I want to change this so that it is a real paragraph. So in order to do that, I'm going to select all of the text and go to editing and advanced find. And in order to search for a paragraph break, you need to use a special character, which is a paragraph mark. And that is a caret symbol and the letter P. Then when I go find in current selection, it will select all of the paragraph breaks. And I'm going to replace all of these with a space. So I'll just type in the space and then go replace all. Then it tells me we made nine replacements in your selection. Do you want to search the rest of the document? No. And so now I have all of my text as just one paragraph. Then I can also do the opposite of this and add in paragraph breaks. So if I go control H, I can change a space and an open bracket symbol into a paragraph break. And so when I select replace, you'll see here it selects the first space and open brackets symbol here, and then replace again, we'll change that to a paragraph break. So it's now on a new line. And I can use this method to separate out a list. And so if I switch this back on, you'll see that each of these has a paragraph break after it. Then the next thing I'm going to do is change multiple paragraph breaks into one paragraph break. So my text here is separated by one, two, three paragraph breaks. 
and then here I have one, two paragraph breaks, and I also have two here as well. So in order to change these, I'm going to control H, and this is the first time I will actually be switching on the use wildcards option. And now when wildcards are switched on, there are actually different options for the special characters. And now you can no longer use the caret symbol and the letter P to represent a paragraph break. When wildcards are switched on, a paragraph break is a caret symbol and then the number 13. But I don't want to search for just one paragraph break. I actually want to find multiple paragraph breaks. So to do this, I'm going to use a special character, which is number of occurrences. And so if I put a two in here between the curvy brackets, that means it will search for everywhere in the document where there are two paragraph breaks side by side. Then if I put a comma after this, it will now search everywhere where there is at least two paragraph breaks, but it can be three paragraph breaks or four, etc. Then I want to replace that with just one paragraph break. And in the replace with box, I can still use the paragraph mark, which is the caret symbol and the letter P. So if I now go replace, you can see it first of all selects the three paragraph breaks here and replace will change that to just one paragraph break. And then here it's selected the next two and replace will change that to just one. And then it will do the same thing here. Okay, and then the next thing I will do is add in a space between the number and the units. So if I go to advanced find, I am going to use another special character, which is characters in a range. And the characters I will be searching for is everything between zero and nine, which is actually every single number. So if I go reading, highlight and highlight all, you'll see it highlights every single number in this document. But I don't actually want that, so I'm going to clear highlighting. What I want is to search for all of the units. So I'm going to put an M after this, and then if I highlight all now, you can see it only highlights everything which is in milliliters and meters. And I will clear highlighting again. And I then want to change this so that I always have a space in between the number and the unit. And in order to do that, I need to add in brackets around this in order to make this into an expression. And once it's an expression, I can use a slash and the number one to take whatever is in this set of brackets here and then reuse it down here. So I'm then gonna do a space and the letter M and now if I go replace, it selects this up here and replace again will add in a space. And I can keep doing this in order to add in a space between all of the numbers and the units. And then the next thing I'm going to do is bold the first word in a list of definitions. So here I have a list of key words and then their definition. And I want to make it so all of the key words are bold. And in order to do that, I am going to use a, another special character, which is going to be the asterisk, which represents zero or more characters. And as this symbol can represent text of any length, it's uh, usually a good idea to put something before and after this. So beforehand, I'm going to put a caret symbol and the number 13. And then after this, I'm going to put a colon. So the caret symbol and the number 13 is going to be the paragraph break just above the key word. And then the colon is what I'm using to separate out my keywords from their definitions. 
and then in the replace with box I'm going to leave it empty then go to format and font and change the font style to bold and OK. Then if I select replace it selects the key word and then the paragraph break just above it and then if I go replace it will change this to bold and I can do this for all of my key words. Then the next thing I'm going to do is change everything that is in quotation marks into italics. So if I go to editing and find an advanced find and I search for a single quotation mark, you can see that Word can't actually find anything. And that is because when you type in a quotation mark in Microsoft Word, it automatically becomes curvy. And so I actually need to type the quotation marks into the document. So I'm going to do an asterisk symbol and then the close quotation marks. Then I can copy this and go back to advanced find and then replace this with what I just copied. And it's a little bit hard to tell, but these quotation marks are now curvy, whereas the one I had before was straight. And now I'm going to replace this with, and I don't want the font to be bold, so I'll go no formatting, then format font and make it italic and OK. And so this will change everything in quotation marks into italics. I also at the same time want to remove the quotation marks because once the text is italicized I no longer need the quotation marks. So in order to do that I'm going to put the asterisks inside brackets and that will make this into an expression which means I can then use the slash one again to reuse whatever value is inside the brackets again down here. But as the quotation marks aren't inside the brackets, they will be removed. So if I go replace, you'll see it selects this first sentence up here and then replace again will change it into italics and the quotation marks at the beginning and the end have disappeared. And I can do this again and again. Then the next thing I'm going to do is remove everything in the brackets. So in order to remove something, you just need to replace it with nothing with no formatting. And so what I want to replace is the brackets with whatever is in between them. So I'm using the asterisk symbol again to represent text of any length. But there's an issue with this because brackets are actually a type of wildcard. So in order to get it to look at the actual brackets, you need to put a slash in front of these. And also, as I have a space in between the end of the word and the first open bracket, I'm actually going to add in a space in front of this as well. Then when I go replace, you'll see it selects the first set of brackets here and replace again will remove the brackets. And I can keep doing this to remove all of the brackets. Then the next thing I'm going to do is remove everything after the comma in this list of names. So I'll select all of the names and then control H. And now I will be searching for a comma and then the asterisk symbol. And then I will use another special character, which will be the end of the word symbol or the greater than symbol. And as I said before, as the asterisk can represent text of any length, you usually want to have something before and after it. So using the end of the word symbol here will force it to stop selecting text at the end of the word. I don't want to replace it with anything, so I'm going to leave that blank and then go replace all. And you can see that removes everything after the comma. We made nine replacements in your selection. Do you want to search the rest of the document? No. 
and then we'll close this. Then the final thing that I'm going to do is swap the first and the last names round. So at the moment, I have the surname first, then a comma, then a space, and then the Christian name. And I want to swap these round. So I'm going to select all of the names and then open up the replace box. And now I'm going to use another special character, which is the beginning of the word symbol or the less than symbol. Then I'll use an asterisk again and then the end of the word symbol. And that will find all of the surnames. Then I'll do a comma and a space and then do the same symbols again. And that will find the Christian name. Now, in order to swap these round, I need to make them both into expressions, which means I need to put them in brackets. Then, as I said before, I can then use a slash and the number one to take whatever is in this set of brackets here and reuse it down here. And as there are two sets of brackets here, this one will be called number one and this one will be called number two. But as I want to swap the order round, I actually need a slash two here and then a space and then a slash one. So now if I go replace, you can see it selects the first name up here and replace again will swap around the first and last names. And then I'll do replace all for the rest of these. OK, so there are actually quite a lot of different wildcards in Microsoft Word. And in this video, I've just shown you a few different examples. But hopefully it should give you a good idea of the sorts of things that they can do. And that is everything.